Amen. Now, the verse that I want to focus on there in James chapter 4 is verse number 7, where the Bible reads, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And the title of my sermon tonight is Resist the Devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, the Bible tells us. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. See, there's a great spiritual battle going on in this world. And our adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And the devil works through deception. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Notice it doesn't say that he tries to deceive the whole world or that his goal would be to deceive. No, it just says that he deceives the whole world. Yeah. He succeeds at deceiving the whole world. The Bible says the God of this world, referring to the devil, the God of this world, the lowercase g, God of this world, has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Amen. And in this spiritual battle, our adversary is the devil. His right. weapon is deception. Now look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 about spiritual warfare. It says in verse number 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And carnal means simply physical or fleshly. He says our weapons are not physical weapons. He's saying, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Notice the wording of this scripture. Imagination, knowledge, thought. This is a battle that's going on in the mind. Right. The devil wants to deceive you. He wants to get into your mind right. and get you to think in ways that are wrong. Yep. And he wants us, God wants us, to take captive every thought. Yeah. Basically, take our thoughts back Amen. and make sure that we renew our mind according to the scripture and not according to the prince of the power of the air, the children that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yeah. We have to take back our thought life and we have to cast down these imaginations and all these things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God all this false knowledge, all these lies, all this deception that's coming at us from the devil. We need to resist the devil. Go to Ephesians chapter number six. While we're looking at these scriptures on, on the devil and on spiritual warfare, deception is the tool that he uses. And so what is the answer to deception? Well, it's the truth. You know, knowing the truth. The Bible says you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if we go through our lives just letting the world dictate what we think and believe, and we have a constant stream of information coming through, whether it's TV, movies, Madison Avenue, just worldly sinful sources coming at us all the time, we're going to be deceived by the devil. It's going to affect us. And no matter how smart you think you are, you will be affected by it. And the antidote is the truth right here. Amen. You know, you've got to unplug from some of this stuff that's coming into your mind and just get into the Word of God and renew your mind. This is like a reality check right here. You know, you live in the fantasy land that the devil creates for you out there. No, you need a reality check. Get your feet back firmly planted on the ground with the truth of God's word here. Otherwise, you'll start thinking along some really wicked lines. Then the devil has an agenda to guide your mind in the wrong direction. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, what is wile? What does it mean by wiles? Well, you remember wily coyote? You know, being wily or the wiles, those are the tricks, the schemes, the deception. Again, he's not just going to just come right out in the open and say, hey, this is what I'm offering you. Here's all the sin and wicked. No, he's going to trick you. He's going to fool you. He's going to deceive you. And he is very cunning. 
He's very subtle, the Bible tells us. And so if we're going to be able to, with, uh, to withstand the wiles of the devil, we must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God, or we will be susceptible to the deceptions that the devil has. That's what the Bible is saying. Now, is he saying, hey, if you're saved, you're guaranteed not to fall into any of the devil's wiles or traps? No, he doesn't say that at all. He said, no, you have to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God. He says, for we wrestle not, verse 12, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And you have to understand this in light of 2 Corinthians 10 that we already read, where he said, hey, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're spiritual, casting down imaginations, bring every thought into captivity and obedience of Christ. You have to understand, this is a struggle to control your mind and your thoughts. He wants to get into your head and deceive you and fool you. And the Bible says that the rulers of the darkness of this world are the enemy. Look, that tells me that there is an organized agenda, an organized plan to deceive you and to get into your mind and to deceive you into not believing what this book says, but believing what the devil wants you to believe. And it's organized because if it weren't organized, there wouldn't be rulers. If it were just, well, it's just bad people doing bad things. No, it is an agenda with the devil at the top And then there are multiple rulers under him. They're known as the rulers of the darkness of this world. Yeah. And the Bible says that if we are not strong in the Lord and standing firm and putting on the whole armor of God, we will be duped. We will be fooled. The Bible says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. There it is right there. The truth is what we need tonight. Amen. He says, your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. What does he mean there? The bre I believe that in that uh, context, when he talks about the breastplate of righteousness, he's talking about right living, living right, living a righteous life. Now, nobody's perfect in the sense that there's none righteous, no, not one, but God does expect us to live right, you know, and, and he wants us to serve him and obey him. And the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But the Bible says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, talking about soul winning, you know, going out there with your feet, going to the lost and preaching the gospel to every creature. He says in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So the devil is coming at you with all these fiery darts, these deceptions, And your defense, above all, is the shield of faith. Because it, faith means believing. So basically, you know, you have the truth and you believe it. And no matter what the devil tells you, you know that this book is true. And if he tells you that which is contrary to this book, your faith tells you, you know what, I don't care how many people are saying this. I don't care how many times they repeat this on the television. I don't care how many times the devil tries to cram this down my throat. I know it's a lie because I have the truth here. And greater than that, I believe it. Amen. And that's the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So notice the emphasis on the truth, faith in the truth, and then the sword of the word of God. I mean, this is what it all comes back to in this spiritual battle. The word of God is our weapon and the word of God is also our defense. Yep. It's both. Go to Psalm 11. You know, we think of these fiery darts of the wicked that are being thrown. The shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. There's Satan himself. And then there are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. What does that mean? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Running things? What do you think he means running? I mean, if I said, hey, I have friends in high places, what am I referring to? People in the government? You know, people who are running the television network? people that are, you know, running these major media organizations. The Bible says there's spiritual wickedness there. Yeah. And it's amazing to me how Christians just sometimes overlook this fact. And they just think 
that there's no organized plan of the devil. There's no conspiracy that's going on because it's just, well, it's just people are sinners. and what. No, there is an organization. There are the rulers of the darkness. There is spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a plan. Look at Psalm 11, verse 1. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily, privily means secretly, privily shoot at the upright in heart. Again, the devil and his minions are ready to shoot those fiery darts secretly, wilily, subtly, deceptively to shoot these fiery darts at you if you are upright or righteous. And then the Bible says in verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And you have to put that in the context here. What do these fiery darts entail? Well, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it had to do with thoughts and imagination and lies and deception. It's all in the mind. And that's why he says here, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What foundations is he talking about? The foundations of what we believe in. The foundational truths of God's word. You know, if you take away those foundations, if you pull out that rug from under us, what do we have left? What can we do? The answer is nothing. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Nothing. We're doomed. If we don't have that firm foundation, if we're not builded upon the rock, where Jesus said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. That's the foundation. And if we don't have the foundation or if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the, Lord, the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. I submit to you tonight that virtually everything that is coming across the television and that is coming across mainstream media networks today is a lie. Virtually Amen all of it. Amen. There's so much lying and deception out there. And if you don't understand that, it's just that you're naive. And you just think that when things are reported in the news or reported on TV, you think that they're real and you think that they're true. It's all fake. Yeah. It's all, it's made up. Or in the event that some of the things that you see on there are actually true or actually happened, they're being hand selected which things are reported on and which things are not reported on are being handpicked and hand selected in order to feed you a specific diet of information that has been planned at a higher level to get you to think in a certain way and to get you to think about certain things and not think about other things. It is literal brainwashing and I mean that in the most literal sense. I'm not just exaggerating or being dramatic up here I'm telling you that there is a plan to brainwash you and to to train you to think in a certain way and the people who are running these things have studied psychology they've studied how our brains work they've studied what our desires and passions are and they are playing upon these different, you know, uh, attributes of the human psyche in order to manipulate you and deceive you. And the only way, the only way to withstand this is to shut it off and read this book instead. Amen. Oh, but how am I going to keep up with every twist and turn of everything that's going on in the world? You know, it just doesn't matter. Amen. This is what matters. Amen. You know, if the whole world's falling apart, I'm sure somebody will tell you about it. Yeah. Right. But to sit there and just monitor everything that's happening in the news and, and, you, and just monitor everything that the world is doing. Listen, you are falling into the trap and the design to control your mind. Now, I don't, I don't follow it. I don't, I don't read the news. I don't follow any of it anymore. I'm sick of it. I like this. 
But you know what? I'm telling you, when I do catch little bits and pieces of what's going on in this world and, and see little things in the news and everything, it just boggles my mind that anybody can even believe that the news is actually <laughs> reporting legitimately. Like, how can anyone believe? But I think it's just that when you watch it every day, you're so used to being deceived that you just are used to the weird stories and the things that don't make sense that it just, yeah. Where, whereas someone like me who doesn't really watch it all, and then all of a sudden you, you catch a little bit of what's going on in the news, it's so easy to tell that it's all just fake and it's all staged. Yeah. I'm telling you, the stuff that makes it onto the news is just, it's just certain things that are handpicked that fits the narrative and fits the agenda yeah. that they want to present. Other things are concealed. Did I have you turn to 1 John chapter 4? Turn to 1 John chapter number 4. You know, I'll, I'll just give you an example. One thing that's been in the news a lot lately, and I heard this story a couple weeks ago, and I just can't believe that people actually take this stuff seriously. But I guess there was, it's like I'm living in the twilight zone or something. And, and folks, if you're plugged into this network of information, you need, to, you need to reboot that thing and you need to refresh and get on the word of God. And, and honestly, you need a reality check because the, the stuff that is being talked about out there, even by Christians, is so weird and so bizarre that I don't understand how anybody can believe in it. And people call me insane. You know what? This world is going crazy. And let me tell you something. God said that there would be a day when they would call good evil and evil good. But not only that. I mean, you'd expect the devil to do that, wouldn't you? But he said, no, no, they'll tell you that sweet is bitter and bitter is sweet. Yeah. I mean, it's just, everything is turned upside down. It's not even just right and wrong that are, it's just everything yeah. is, is topsy-turvy and backwards. You know, one thing that I heard in the news, I just couldn't even believe this, but I guess there was some law in Indiana that was passed. It was some kind of a Freedom of Religion Protection Act. And it was supposedly something about giving people the right to refuse service unto homos or something when they're trying to get married and, and do their thing. Or, you know, it's always the cake that they're trying to get decorated, <laughs> right? And so this law is passed in Indiana, and then all the Christians say, hey, isn't this a great victory? Then the governor comes out the same week and says, oh, we don't want anybody to misunderstand the law because we don't want anyone to think that this is saying that they don't have to serve homos because they do. And I'm, th then what is the law? I don't, what was it even for then? Well, we just don't want to make sure people... Has, so that, then some pizza place comes out, Memories Pizza, and says, we're not going to be catering any gay weddings. And they're like, but we'll serve all kinds of homo customers who come to our restaurant, but we're not going to cater none of them queer weddings. Who in the world gets their wedding catered from a cheap pizza place? Can you explain that to me? And then they're just like, and then they're just, and then all the, the sodomites of the world are just raging and infuriated at this pizza place. And it's just this huge, big stink. And then they had to shut down, or they, they didn't have to, but the weakling cowards that, that they always are, they shut down the pizza place and it was a big stink. And then they raised a bunch of money online, blah, blah. It's, it's so stupid. Look, no one caters their wedding at some cheap hole-in-the-wall pizza restaurant. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we're not gonna cater, you know, we'll serve queers that come in here, but we're not gonna cater a gay way. It's like, do 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 do. what are you talking about? And I'm thinking to myself, who are these perverts who ordered a pizza for the wedding? I mean, who has ever been to a wedding where it's like, hey, let's order the cheapest pizza around and let's, let's cater the wedding like that. Please don't raise your hand. <laughs> Please no one raise your hand. And then, hey, you know, and here's the thing. These people are doubly, they're doubly perverted. Because you're, not only are, are you perverting nature by being a sodomite. Yeah, right. right. You're catering your wedding with cheap pizza. <laughs> but it's stupid because guess what? Nobody even asked them to cater the wedding with cheap, stupid pizza. But it's like, we're not going to cater this. And then they back down. They always back down. But all it is is just a brainwashing. 
It's just to brainwash you, my friend, because the other big one that was in the, it was huge. It was like everywhere in the news. That's how I even heard about it because I don't even watch the news and I heard about it repeatedly. Who heard about this thing? The pizza and the, yeah, see all the hands are going up. Everybody heard about this, this bizarre thing. Then, so then yesterday I see this video. It was like a five minute video about this sweet cakes by Melissa up in Oregon. Who heard about this one? Yeah, look at all, all hands all over the building. God bless you, I see that hand. But, you know, sweet cakes by Melissa, okay? And this girl is literally crying on TV and saying, you know, oh, it's, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, and I wasn't trying to hurt these sodomites' feelings. You know, I'm not that kind of person. I don't want to hurt anybody, but I just couldn't cater this particular event. And I've made so many cupcakes for them in the past, and I'm, I'm more than happy to serve them. And, you know, I, this is just how I've chosen to live my life as a Christian. I'm just following my faith, but I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I just can't cater this gay wedding. And then they're just like, you're fined $150,000. She was fined one hundred fifty. dollars They're garnishing the guy's wages out of his paycheck. He's working now as a garbage man. He's making half what he made at the bakery. His wages are being garnished. The state of Oregon is fining him $150,000 because they would not bake the cake for the sodomite wedding, okay? And it's just like all the Christians are rallying. But you know what? This might surprise you, and I've thought about this before I say it. You know what? I don't feel sorry for her at all. And you know what? He deserves to be working as a garbage man and he deserves to have his wages garnished and she deserves to lose her bakery shop because you know what? They are compromising and they're not standing for the word of God and they are tools of the media to brainwash you. Amen. To brainwash. They are just tools of the media to brainwash you Amen. and to lie to you and to deceive you. Amen. Same thing with this stupid pizza place. They're just volunteers that we're not going to cater weddings that no one asked them to cater. And the sweet cakes for Melissa, you know, oh yeah, yeah, we love serving queers. Well, you know, we don't serve queers at this church. Amen. You know, I don't own a bakery, but I'm, I'm fitting to open one. Amen. I'm going to open a bakery. And I, you know, if they walk in, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. What does the Bible say, my friend? But you've been deceived tonight. You've been lied to. And you don't even know what the Bible says anymore. Amen. Because you're watching TV and you've been brainwashed. The media has been brainwashing you week after week and month after month and day after day to get you to think it's all about gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage. Don't let them, don't let them bake the cake. Don't bake the cake. Don't bake the cake. Yeah, if they come, I can serve them. Yup, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Yup, I love them. Yup, don't bake the cake. Yeah, but just, but just, just not the marriage. Just don't let them get married. No, care if they get married. That's not what the Bible says. Right. The Bible does not say, don't hurt their feelings. The Bible calls them beasts. Yeah, that's right. Turn in your Bible tonight to 2 Peter chapter 2. Sick of it. But while you're turning to 2 Peter 2, I'm going to read for you what you were on in 1 John chapter 4. <laughs> it says, Year of God, little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Why are we afraid of these people, huh? Amen. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Why do we cower in fear and we're so scared of them? Like, oh no, I better be careful. This is a really hard decision. No, it's not a hard decision, Melissa. Why don't you get out of that stupid liberal church you're in and get in a leather-long, Bible-believing, King James Baptist church, and it wouldn't be a hard decision. Amen. Look, do you, who thinks it's a hard decision if some faggot wants you to make him a wedding cake? No. Anybody struggling with that right now? No. Say, so, well, you're being too hard on Melissa. At least Melissa's taking a stand. She's not taking a stand at all. It's weak. It's worthless. She is part of what is destroying America. Exactly. Because you know what? Look, I can give you my cell phone tonight, and I can show you where I have thousands of emails. Thousands. Just in the last month alone from all of these filthy, reprobate, homosexual haters of God calling me every name under the sun, 
t describing how they want to kill me and my family and all the horrible, disgusting, perverted things that they want to do and how much they hate my ever-loving guts. And let me tell you something, I don't even bat an eye. It's water off a duck's back. It means nothing to me. Amen. I don't even frown. I don't even get a sad look on my face for a second. I don't, my heart doesn't even start beating. I don't even get angry. I don't even yell at my phone. I don't do any of it. But you know what? You know what makes me mad? Melissa. And Memories Pizza. You know what makes me mad? Christians, so-called, who will not stand on the word of God and who kowtow and bow down to these filthy perverts. And you know what? When I get an email from some Christian telling me how I need to back down and stop preaching against the homos and we need to love these people and open our arms to them, that's what makes me start yelling at my phone. Yeah. You want to see me yell at my phone? Show me one of those emails. That's what makes me upset. Because you know what? That is what's destroying America. Yeah. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, yeah. will pray and humble themselves and, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, right. then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their hand. Look, these home, look, when I get thousands of emails from homos saying perverted, filthy things, that's just the homos being the homos. Yeah. Why would I expect them to act like anything other than an animal? But why in the world are God's people repeating the same junk? Because yeah. they've been brainwashed. You say, you're going to lose people if you preach like this. Good. Good. It's the truth. At least people will know that there's been a prophet among them. Amen. Because the things that I'm saying to you tonight are from the Bible and they sound like the Bible. They don't sound like these Christians on TV. And that's brainwashing you, my friend. And you can say, well, she's fighting the battle in her own way. She's fighting nothing. She's a tool of the devil. She stands up there and is the media's pawn and the media's tool. And they put her on TV. And you know what? It doesn't matter whether these homos get married or not. It doesn't stinking matter. But you've been taught that that's the issue. Did you get that from the Bible? But you've been taught that and taught that and told that and told that. What you're not noticing is when these people get on TV and say, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's okay. Uh, that's just not the way I'm going to live my life. That is not right. That is not the truth. And you know what? Back, back when it was popular to preach against homosexuality, back when Jerry Fulwell was actually against homosexuality before it became unpopular. You know what he said? Because, you know, I have the film back there, AIDS, the judgment of God. He said AIDS is not the judgment of God on homos. He said it's the judgment of God on the society that tolerates homosexuality. Because it spreads to everybody. When, look, what does the Bible say? Don't get mad at me. What does the Bible say tonight? And if you're mad at me and you think I'm crazy, then you're one of these people that's calling good evil and evil good and putting sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. So I'm crazy because I get up here and say it's filthy, disgusting, and vile for a man to be intimate with another man. Amen. I'm not even going to... The Bible says it's a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Right. So I will spare you even beginning to describe the sickness and the filth and the disgusting act of these disgusting, vile, reprobate, filthy beasts. Amen. I'm not even going to talk about it. And by the way, quit posting these pictures, these people that post pictures of, of transvestites on Facebook. And Look, if you're a Christian, even if you're saying, oh, look how bad this is, don't even post that crap because I don't want to see it. Amen. I don't want to look at some trans, oh, look, there's a TV show with a transvestite. I don't want to see that stupid picture. Right. Because seeing a man dressed like a woman makes you want to throw up. Right. I don't want to look at it. It's a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Yeah. When you see a picture of these men and these freaks, should not be once named among us. Disgusting. Yeah. What does the Bible say tonight? The Bible says in 2 Peter 2, don't hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. Now here's what the Bible says. 2 Peter chapter 2. It says in verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow. 
making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. You say, oh, that was back in the Old Testament. That was different back then. No, this is the New Testament. This is 2 Peter. And he says, Sodom and Gomorrah was an example unto those that after, after this, after the New Testament, yeah. should live ungodly. The Bible says he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Let me ask you something. Was Lot right or wrong to live in that city? Wrong. God said he was wrong. But he lived in there and he vexed his righteous soul from day to day seeing and hearing their unlawful deeds. So why are you living in Sodom? And I'm not saying by living in Phoenix you're living in Sodom. Oh no. I don't feel like I live in Sodom because you know what? In my neighborhood, I don't see a bunch of Sodomites and freaks in my neighborhood. I mean, do you just go uh, outside your door and just see sodomites and freaks everywhere, everywhere you turn? No, but when you turn on TV, it's like that. Yeah. But the news media is going to portray it to you like that. That's how Facebook will look, but even when Christians are posting this filth and showing you all this junk. You know, that's why are we vexing our righteous souls from day to day in seeing and hearing their unlawful deeds? Even looking at these movies and TV that are filled with these sodomite freaks. The Bible says it's filthy. What does the Bible say in verse 12? But these as natural brute beasts. Look, I'm not making this up. When I get up here and say they're filthy, that's a direct quote from the Bible. Amen. When I get up here and say that they're beasts or animals, that is a direct quote from the Bible. Yeah, right. These as brute beasts made to be taken of and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Look, the Bible says, flip over if you would to uh, Romans 1, Romans chapter 1, the Bible says, you're of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Listen to me. Amen. I'm going to promise you something right now. I am preaching the word of God Amen. right now Amen. and the power of the spirit of God right now. Amen. And let me tell you something. If you don't hear this, I wonder, are you of God? Because everything I'm saying is right here. And if you're, you, oh, you're the strong language. No, God used strong language. Right. He said it's filthy. He said it's vile. He said that they are beasts made to be taken and destroyed. He said that they are worthy of death. He said that they are reprobate, that they're an abomination, that they're disgusting. Look, if you have a problem with this, it just makes me wonder what is wrong with you yeah, right. today. Yeah. And you know what? You need to, if, if you know that you're saved tonight yeah. and, and, and you're struggling with this subject, And just like, man, I just don't know about this preaching. You know what? You need to do a serious reality check. And you need to find me this sweet cakes by Melissa mentality in the Bible. I want to see it. I'll, I'd like to see it after the service. I'd like to see where Lot is supposed to open a stinking bakery in Sodom and have a bunch of filthy faggots coming through the doors of his bakery and he's making them cupcakes every day, but not a wedding cake. But he'll make them cupcakes and smile and treat them good. And he doesn't want to hurt their feelings. That's not what the Bible says. Amen. It's wicked. It's disgusting. And you know what? We need to resist the devil. And what did he say over and over again in that passage about the spiritual warfare? He said that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. He said three times, stand, stand, stand. Look, he's saying don't give any ground. Amen, right. He didn't say slowly back away like from a scary dog. He said, no, stand your ground. Yeah. Don't back down. And listen, don't back down a single inch. You know why? Because if you back up an inch, the devil's not going to flee from you. Right. It's like running away from a dog, my friend. Yeah. Isn't that what they always say? Hey, vicious dog, don't run away. You know what you do? Right. You know, you take a step toward them. You know, you right. swing something at them. Right. You don't go, <laughs> and they can smell your fear. And you know what the Bible calls sodomites? Dogs. Right. Look it up in the Bible. Somebody find that verse for Who's got a smartphone? Find me that verse where the sodomites are called dogs. Don't take my word for it. Somebody, if, if smartphones are coming out all over the building. <laughs> Love technology. Love it. <clears throat> Listen to me, folks. 
greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Why should we give any ground? Right. Why should we take a single step backwards? Right. Well, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Right. Fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Right. Rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yeah. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. What I tell you in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And I'm not afraid of these people. I am, because why? Is it because I'm so great? No, because greater is he that's in me, the Holy Ghost, than he that's in the world. And you know what? They're of the world. Therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. And hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And when you see a bunch of people that just freak out at hard Bible preaching, but they just eat up all this stupid quasi-Christian junk, yeah. and they just eat up the liberal Christianity of the world, they eat up the George W. Bushes of this world, and hey, God bless you, oh, it's from God, oh, you know, and they eat up all the, the, the watered down Christians of the world that tell you, oh, don't worry, we love you, and we want to be your friend, and we're going to come over to your house for a barbecue, but we just don't condone your sin. No, that's not in the Bible. Show me chapter and verse on that. Yeah, it's right. not what it says. You know that's not what it says. You heard him. Deuteronomy 23, what is it? Deuteronomy 23, 17 and 18. What's the Bible say? Let's find out for myself here. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. And again, If you study the, the Old Testament, that's often a way that God expresses things where he'll restate things. He'll say it one way and then he'll say it a different way. And he'll restate things using parallelism between two statements. The whole book of Job is like that. Most of Proverbs is like that. It's a pattern throughout the Bible. So he talks about the whore and the sodomite and he talks about the whore and the dog. And that's why the Bible says, for without are dogs, right. Amen. sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth to make a lie. Which sin is he referring to when he says dogs? What about when he says, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. Yeah, right. yeah. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Why is he, is he telling you to, hey, when you're out soul winning, watch out for dogs. Be sure there's no dog before you go in that gate. That, when he said, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, and beware of the concision. And the concision, he's referring to the Jews there. Because he says, they're, he says, we're the circumcision. Right. They're the concision. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, it's a fake circumcision because it's a physical circumcision, but it's not a circumcision of the heart and the spirit. Right. And he says, we're the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Uh, what do those two things have to do with one another? Well, I don't know, have you been to Tel Aviv lately where there's just gay pride flags lining the streets? Have you read Romans 9 where it says, hey, if they'd not been left a seed, they would have been like Sodom and been likened to Gomorrah? Yeah, that's, that's coming true. That's happening. But the Bible calls them dogs. The Bible calls them beasts. The Bible calls them filthy. The Bible calls them vile. The Bible calls them reprobate. Yeah. What does the Bible say in Romans 1? Look down at your Bible. Did you turn there? Romans 1. Let me just show you the foolishness of the media and the false Christian paradigm that people are operating under. It says in Romans 1.26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. Look, that's what the Bible says about these sodomites. Men with men, he says they are filled with all unrighteousness. Now, a lot of people will purposely, and none of it's by accident, I don't believe that anymore. It's all done by design. And when they sit there and say, oh, well, Romans 1's about a whole bunch of sins. It's not just about sodomy. No, it's describing the sodomites because being filled is not how you start a sentence. 
What does the Bible say? Being filled. That's a continuation of something else. If you would have started out a sentence like that in elementary school, you would have got a little red X by that if you said being filled is a complete sentence. Being filled with all unrighteousness, period. That's not a complete sentence, Johnny. You get a big red X through that because that's a continuation of something else. Because the full sentence is, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Semicolon, being filled. These people are filled with these things. That's what it's actually saying. And anybody who tells you otherwise is a liar. Because it's clear, is anybody, is your Bible different? Or does everybody have a semicolon and being filled? Everybody have the same thing? Okay. Well, then we're all on the same page. So what's the deal? Where are people coming up with this? Oh, it's just condemning a whole bunch of sins. No, it's telling you that sodomites are doing all these sins. Yeah. That they are filled with all unrighteousness. Now, you could have just stopped right there being filled with all unrighteousness because that's, that's everything. But God then gets specific of what exactly they're filled with. He says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God. That is the truth. He says, uh, despiteful, which is another word for hateful. And then they call, we're hateful. The Bible says they're the ones that are despiteful. They're the ones that are haters of God. It says, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, a covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. And I want to focus on one word in that list that's the subject tonight. Implacable. Implacable. Placable. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know what this word means. And so uh, some people just read over this and they just kind of glaze over on that word. That is an important word that these pizza places and bakeries need to understand that word implacable. Because you know what implacable means? It means someone who is impossible to appease. You cannot appease them. That's what implacable means. Look it up in the dictionary. It's someone who cannot be pacified. No matter what you give them, they're going to want more. No matter what you get them, they're never going to stop. They're never going to back down because they will never be satisfied. Never. It's, it's not possible because they're implacable. That able at the end, they're not able to be placated. They cannot be placated. They're implacable. You can't appease them. That means that you can't compromise with them. Compromising with them is a waste of time. Because if you think, well, let's just, give them a, let's just give them a little bit. Let's just throw them a bone and we can live at peace with all men like God wants us to. No, you cannot placate these people. It is, they will always want more. You bake them cupcakes, that's not enough. That's not enough. No, you have to bake the cake for our faggot wedding itself. It's not enough for you to just, you know, just, just basically feed us and serve us and act like we're normal. And look, I don't, I'm not going to act like homos are normal. Amen. They're not normal. Amen. Not just going to smile and shake their hand and treat them like everyone else. And act like, they're not normal. They're disgusting and filthy and reprobate and evil. And they are destroying our society. And listen to me, they are just completely militant And they are, they're, they're more evangelical than a lot of people in this room. They preach their gospel of sodomy more than you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, some of you in this room. They are so aggressive. They're so militant. I mean, look, they, they're right, they have time to sit there and write thousands of emails to me because they think that they're going to back me down. You know what? It's going to be a cold day in hell before I back up a millimeter. Before I back up a centimeter, I will not back up at all. Not even a little bit. Amen. None. Amen. Never. It's never going to happen. Amen. Amen. And I don't care if half the church right now got up and walked out right now and said, this is just too much, Pastor. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? I'd say, don't let the door hit you on your way out. Get out of here. Amen. Because you know what? Somebody has to get up and say this stuff. Somebody has to represent this book tonight. And listen, Christians on TV, I don't care if it's these bunch of long-haired hippies with Duck Dynasty. I don't care if it's Melissa. 
I don't care if it's Memories Pizza. I don't care if it's all these little Christian Kirk Camerons and all these people. Look, nobody is representing the Word of God tonight on this subject in the mainstream. It's not being represented. It's my job to represent it. I will represent it. And you know what? I'm not afraid of people leaving the church. I'm not afraid of losing listeners and losing, oh, you're just turning people away. You know what? I don't care because I only care about preaching the truth. That's all I care about. You know what gets me up in the morning every day? I don't get up in the morning every day hoping that Faith Word Baptist Church is going to get bigger. You know what gets me up in the morning every day? Is I want to preach a good sermon. And when I say a good sermon, I don't mean one that people are going to like, one that pleases the Lord. Amen. One that's in the power of the Holy Spirit, one that's going to change lives, one that's going to pronounce the Word of God boldly, and one that is going to fight the battle. That It's a war. It's a battle. And look, I'm not a violent person. I have never laid hands on anyone and harmed them or injured them. I've never assaulted anyone or anything like that. I'm not a violent individual. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And you know what? I'm not going to assault anybody. I'm not going to lay hands on anybody. I mean, only in self-defense would I ever lay hands on anyone or use any physical weapons. You know, if I were being assaulted, of course, I would not flinch from defending myself or defending my family. But, but let me tell you this. I am ready to fight. And you know what? I'm not going to hold back my sword from blood. And I'm not talking about a physical sword. I'm talking about the Word of God. Amen. And I, listen, it's a fight. Yep. Notice he says, fight the good fight. Right. He didn't say, you know, coach the good coaching, Joel Osteen. <laughs> he didn't say motivate the good motivation. He didn't say encourage the good encouraging. He said fight the good fight, Timothy. Fight. Fight. And you know what? If you can't see that there's a major fight going on right now, it's happening. I mean, we're in the middle of it. Amen. I mean, literally, we will tell our children and grandchildren someday. You know, I remember exactly when it changed, when our country became Sodom. I can tell you exactly what happened. I remember it was back in 2015 that they started rolling out this stuff. And, and we could point to other times, obviously, you know, 1999, we could point to 1999 and say, hey, that's when they started rolling it out on TV. You know, and, then, and, and we can, and, and you know what? Are we gonna sit there and be the generation that's so lame and so worthless that we just let these people walk all over us while we cry on TV because we don't have our bakery anymore? You know what? I don't care about your stupid bakery. I don't care about your sweet cakes. And you know what? I don't want to eat your stupid junk food and, and your stupid cupcake shop. And oh no, you have to be a garbage man. Oh no. Well, you know what? Maybe you should have took a stand and then God might have blessed you. And you didn't take a stand at all. And you're the tool of the liberal media getting on TV and denying the truth. And getting up and saying, oh, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't want to tell them that they're wrong. It's just, we just don't live our lives. We just can't participate. But we want to serve you. No, we don't. No, we don't, you liar. We think that homos are sick and disgusting because we're actually real Christians who believe the Bible. Yeah, right. That it's filthy, vile, and abomination. And the Bible says, whosoever lies with mankind, uh, whosoever lies also with mankind as he lies with a woman, even both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. That's what I believe. And I don't care how many gaytheists and fagnostics write to me in my email and want to talk to me about shellfish and the Sabbath day. You know what? It's not my responsibility if people don't understand the Bible. Of course the natural man receiveth not the things of the God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. I don't care what people think. I don't care what these people write to me. I don't care what these monsters and these filthy dreamers and these bunch of perverts write to me. You think that I care if some pervert or what the SPLC or the ADL thinks of me. You know what? It's a badge of honor. I'm going to leap for joy if I get persecuted for this because you know what? That I know great is my reward in heaven Amen. because that so they persecuted the prophets which were before me. I'm not giving an inch. And if you're one of these people that's like, that's hanging on for, and, and uh, people have expressed it to me. People have emailed me. People have told me, you know, I just wish you'd just change on this homosexual thing. <laughs> I love your preaching. 
and I love your stuff on prophecy, and I love it. But, you know, if you would just back down on this, you're, you're so off on this. No, 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 you're off, and I will never change. I will go to the grave Amen. preaching what I'm preaching tonight. Amen. Whether that's tomorrow or 50 years from now, I will go to the grave preaching this. And you know what? If I ever back down on this issue, you need to throw me out from being the pastor of this church. And you need to play this back to me and where I'm saying, listen to me, old Stephen Anderson. <laughs> listen to me, watered down Stephen Anderson. You have been brainwashed. Why did you buy a TV? Why did you watch sitcoms in Hollywood? Why did you start listening to this garbage? What are you doing, Stephen Anderson of the future? Read Romans 1. Read 2 Peter 2. Read Jude. You're an embarrassment to me. <laughs> That's it. I mean, you know what? Seriously, I'm making a time capsule here. <laughs> Love the technology. Amen. You say, why are you doing this? Because I'm going to resist the devil, and he's going to flee from you, or he's going to flee from me. And if you take this watered down rice, it's going to walk all over you. It's, you look, bullies, you can never give in to bullies. Didn't you learn that on the playground? Do you remember that on the playground? Yeah. The kids who give in to the bullies just get bullied more. Yeah. Yeah. And they give them their lunch money. And, you know, you might think that's a cliche, but I actually went to a school where it was like, hey, kid, give me your lunch money, literally. I've been there. I've lived it. Taking your lunch, taking, taking your snacks leaving you with just the fruits and vegetables, taking all the, you know, taking all the sweets and the, you know, whatever. You know, what is it with these queers and cakes? You know, it's like, they, 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 first they want your Twinkie. They wanted our Twinkies and Ding Dongs and Ho-Hos back in school. They'd take that stuff from you, these bullies on the playground. Now they're bullying some cake shop in Oregon. or where, And what kind of filthy weirdos are running the state of Oregon that want to find these people? And look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the government's right. Good night, finding somebody for this. I'm just saying that I don't feel bad for Christians who are watered down, compromised. Why is Melissa being destroyed? Because she's trying to have it both ways. And you always get destroyed. It's like, you know, there's, the, there's one side of the road over here that represents standing with the word of God. And you know what? You're safe. You're on a rock. The Bible says that God will protect us. We're in his hand. He said, it, you know, it's like, it reminds me of the song. He hideth my soul Amen. in the cleft of the rock and covers me there with his hand. We're safe if we're on this rock right here. We're dwelling safely. Whom then shall we fear? Oh, well, they can kill you. So what? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you know what? No, they can't kill me. Because you know what Jesus said to Pontius Pilate? Thou wouldest have no power at all against me except it were given thee from heaven. He can only, they, you know, only when God allows me to be killed will I be killed. I'm not worried. Whatever he wants to do. And then over on this side is the side of just total wickedness, total placating of evil, total, yeah, what color do you want that cake in? You know, let me give you the, let me give you the sodomite discount. Okay. But here's where people get into trouble. Instead of getting on this side of the road, instead of getting on this side of the road, they're just kind of like, ah, ah, and there's just traffic, just ah, semis, and ah, there's like, ah, why? You got to pick a side. Listen to what the Bible says. This is Elijah speaking. 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. Amen. And if Baal be God, follow him. Look, if you want to worship Satan, then go worship Satan. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And you know what? If you're over here, you'll be safe because God's going to protect you. Amen. And if you're over here, you'll be safe because the devil's going to protect you. And if you're in the middle right here trying to be a Christian who's watered down, nobody's going to protect you. And you're going to be crying on TV about, I didn't want to hurt the sodomites. I didn't want to hurt their feelings. In fact, I feel bad for them. But why are you finding me $150,000? The love of money is the root of all evil, Melissa. The love of money is the root of all evil. Who cares about your stupid $150,000? You know what? My country and my family and my society and my morality and the souls of mankind is worth more than $150,000, Melissa. 
and I'm not going to cry one tear about your $150,000, but you know what? I'm going to cry for the death of America. Yeah. I'm going to shed tears about the world that my family's going to have to live in because of Christians like you who won't take a stand. And you know what? It's the Christians' fault because there are way more of us than there are of them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Way more. You know how many people are sodomites in this country? 2%. Yeah. I guarantee you, I don't know how many people are saved, but I'll guarantee you it's way more than 2% of the United States is saved. You go out soul winning with me, if we knock on 50 doors that actually answer the door and we ask them, do you know for sure if you're going to heaven, you know that several of those 50 are going to tell you, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, Jesus is the only way to heaven, it's all by faith and you can't lose your salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who agrees with that? It's so true. I mean, you know, look, if you talk to 50 people, you know and I know a bunch of them are going to be already saved. You go out soul winning for a few hours, you run into people that are already saved all the time. Now, it might not be that way in, in certain parts of the world that are very dark spiritually, but look, in the United States, a lot of people are saved. Now, the majority are not saved, but you and I know that there are a lot more people that are saved. And I'm not even talking about people that claim to be a Christian. I mean, look, more than half of the people in this country claim to be a Christian, more than 50%. You know, tons of people in Arizona claim to be a Christian. I mean, if we counted all them, it's like, good night. You know, there's way more of us than there are of them. But even if you only counted the people who are truly saved, who truly believe the gospel and have the Holy Spirit living inside them in the United States, it's way more than the sodomites in the United States of America. There are more children of God than these reprobates. It's the truth. But you know why they're winning? Because they're not backing down one inch. Because they're implacable. And because they will not even compromise one whit. And you're just backing up, backing up, backing up. And that's, that's the only reason. All it would take would be for every Christian in this country to yell boo one time. They'd all run back in the closet. And you know why everybody thinks I'm a fanatic and putting me on the HuffPo and putting me on these news shows and come interview me? Do you still stand by what you said? Do you still believe that? Do you still not want to do it? Look, yes, forever, amen, will never change. But you know why they keep asking me that? It's just because they're so used to everybody backing down. Wait, what did you say? You're not changing? You're not backing down? <laughs> but you know what? There needs to be an army of people. Not, not, not Elijah standing up and saying, hey, I'm only... No, it needs to be 7,000 men Amen. who've not bowed the knee to Baal that all need to stand up and cry aloud. Well, I just don't like the fact that you're screaming from the pulpit. That's not the problem. Because right. pro if I got up here and screamed, Jesus saves, you'd love it. <laughs> right? Everybody, every Christian would be, woo! I mean, look at these holy roller churches. Jesus, woo! It's not the volume that's the problem. It's what I'm saying that people don't like. Yeah. Amen. And what I'm saying is the truth. Implacable. If they're implacable, why try and compromise? Why give them an inch? I mean, just, just picture it. Just Let me just tell you. And you say, well, but what do the laws say about this? Look, the First Amendment. Done. First Amendment. It's, it's our religion. It's protected. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. It's protected and I will never back down on it. And you know, they, they, they ask me, hey, would you perform a wedding for these people at your church? I say no, and they're not even allowed at our church. I don't know, is that allowed? Is that illegal? I don't care. <laughs> I, would sooner, I would sooner shut this church down than let these pedophiles in. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Period. Amen. In a hard, and it's, no, it's not a hard decision. I, it's like they told Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful the, to concern. He said, we're not careful to answer thee concerning this matter because there was just no doubt in their mind. They knew it wasn't right to bow down to that idol. There was no question. And that's how it is with this subject. There's no doubt. Case closed. There it is right in the word of God over and over again. I'm not going to back up a single step. And I'm not careful to answer them concerning this matter. It, it, that's what it is. And, you know, speaking of the fact that they're implacable, you turn to Revelation 22, 
But while you're turning there, you know, Isaiah 26, 10 says, Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Some people, it doesn't matter what you do or what you tell them. It's not going to fix anything. And, and listen to me. What I'm telling you tonight is the truth, and we need a reset button, and even the Christians are leading us astray. It's not even just the liberal media and whatever. It's the Christians who are leading you astray the most. It's the liberal watered down Christians. That's why people, you know, oh, you know, send your kid to this Christian school or get your kid this Christian textbook. And, you know, I always, tell, I always tell people, you know what, I'm, I'm not afraid that my children are going to read a, a, a science book that mentions evolution and start believing in evolution because my kids are saved. You know, and they have the Holy Spirit living inside them. They're not going to start becoming an atheist and believing in evolution because they're saved. There's no danger. I'm not, I don't worry about that. But you, but you know what? You know what does worry me, though, is that they would become one of these watered-down, lily-livered, weak pink tea lemonade type Christians, that is what worries me. That's what I'm afraid of. Not afraid of them becoming, you know, some big bang believing evolutionist, you know, because they're saved. <laughs> but I'm afraid that they'll get sucked into this. They'll be led away with the error of the wicked through these things. But um, Revelation 22, 11, this, this is a key verse. Here's a key verse for you. Not often quoted verse. But it's, it's, it's the word of God. Revelation 22, 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. You know what God's saying is that, look, there are people out there who are wicked, filthy people, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's too late for them. They're doomed. Give up. Game over. But you know what? You that are holy and you that are righteous just need to maintain the integrity of yourself. Right. That's, you can't control other people. You can't make the filthy not be filthy anymore. You can't make the unjust stop being unjust. You can't fix that, okay? You can't just bear the weight of the world on your shoulders and think that you're going to fix these people. You can't do it. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. No pun intended. <laughs> but you know what? We need to perfect holiness in the fear of God. And don't say we're not reaching people. Or Look, we go out evangelizing constantly in this church. Yeah. Show, me, show me the other church in Phoenix that's doing more evangelizing. Show me the other church in Phoenix that's knocking more doors. And you know what? Oh, you just, you just, you don't love people. Well, you know what? I've accidentally, I've accidentally given the gospel to more homos than a lot of these bleeding hearts have given the gospel to them on purpose. Yeah, right. Because everybody who's a homo doesn't walk around wearing a sign that says, I'm a homo. Yeah, right. They should, you know. <laughs> I have an STD, you know. <laughs> HIV positive. They wear that on the billboards, but I've never seen them wearing that in the flesh. You know, one of my neighbors wanted to punish me because my sermon was on the news, you know, where I was ripping on the sodomites last Christmas. You know, I had my own, you know, you know, Charlie Brown had his Christmas special. I had my Christmas special, you know, the AIDS free Christmas. But anyway, you know, they wanted to punish me for that. So here's how they punished me. They put up a queer pride flag just right around the corner from me. And they, they went on uh, the internet and said, this is the punishment for Pastor Anderson. We're gonna fly this flag. And I'm just thinking, about, I wish they all flew that stupid flag because then we can know where not to let our kids go anywhere near it <laughs> and know who the enemy is so that we can right. stay as far away from them as possible yeah. so we don't have to look at them. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. I don't care what these filthy sodomites do. Let them be unjust. Let them be filthy. Who cares? But you know what I'm going to do? Have integrity. And you know what I'm going to do? Preach God's word to God's people. That's who I care about correcting on this. Out amongst the unsaved? I don't care. Look, unsaved people are going to be unsaved people. Filthy people are going to be filthy. What, what, what have I to do with that? The Bible says, 
what have I to do to judge them also that are without? He said, do not ye judge them that are within? Them that are without, God judgeth. Wherefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. The bottom line is that we need to worry about ourselves and keeping our own integrity right and preaching to our fellow Christians the truth of God's word on this subject and on every subject in order to cut through the deception and the brainwashing of the devil. We need to teach our fellow believers. That's what this sermon's for, to teach them that. Then we go out to the lost and we bring the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? If somehow some unsaved person hears this sermon and doesn't understand it and is turned away from the gospel, you know what? They're just, they're turned away from the word of God. Yeah. If they don't respect the righteous statutes and judgments of the Lord, there's nothing I can do for that person because they're crooked, they're unjust. You know, I, there's nothing I can do for that person. All I can do is preach the word. And you know what? It's working. Amen. Yeah. We're winning people to Christ every week. Lots of people. We're winning lots of people to Christ every week. It's working. Not only that, we're growing in the Lord. People's lives are being changed. Our church is growing. Our church is thriving. We're having an impact on other people all across America and all across the world because what we're doing is working. And you know what's not working? This appeasement crowd. The appeasement crowd that wants to just walk on eggshells and all the disclaimers and real careful how we deal with this subject. Look, there's nothing to be careful about this subject. It's, it's, it's open shut. Anybody who reads the Bible has the right mentality on this. And, you know, if you read a lot of Bible and you're one of these apologists for these people and you want to defend these people and everything, it just makes me wonder about you. Because he, you know, he that is of God heareth us. I mean, that's how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Right. When I start pre when I start showing somebody stuff from the Bible and talking to them out of the Bible, and everything's just going, whoosh, that just makes me think you're not saved. Right. Yeah. Why isn't the Holy Spirit guiding you into all truth? I thought he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not of God. Yeah. I thought they know the voice of the shepherd. They hear him. They follow him. Why is it that certain people, you show them verse after verse, and it's just like, whoosh. Because right. mm -hmm. they're not saved, that's why. Yeah. Other people, you show it to them, and maybe they were ignorant about it before. That's okay, you know. We all started out ignorant at some point. You know, maybe they've just been real brainwashed by TV. They're new to the subject. They're new to the Bible. But here's the difference. When you show it to them and they see it in the Word of God, they just, you know, that's what it says. That's the spirit of truth. Amen. And then there's the spirit of error. And that tells you that people are not of God. You, I mean, what kind of a person do you have to be to defend this stuff? Are you Now, some people are just stupid. Some people are just so stupid, they haven't even thought about it. They, don't even, they haven't even thought about what these people do and how disgusting and filthy. They're just stupid. And listen, they're idiots. Yeah. And I don't say that lightly. Christians who want to just love all over these homos, you know, they're stupid is what they are. Yeah. Yeah. You're stupid. That's like saying, oh, I'm just going to love on the person who is, you know, holding a knife to my throat and ready to kill me. I'm just going to be nice. No, you need to kick them in the groin yeah. Yeah. when somebody's got a knife to your throat. You know, you need to do something to get out of there. I mean, the bottom line is that this appeasement mentality is either stupid or it's from evil people. You're either stupid or evil if you're for these sick perverts. And you know what? You say, oh, they're just more loving than you, Pastor Anderson. They just love people more. No, they don't because they're ruining their testimony to the whole world. Yeah. If you, I, I just preached about it a few weeks ago. If you really loved people, do you love 1 billion Hindus? I do. Do you love 1.6 billion people living in India today? Well, you know what? Homosexuality is illegal over there. And they think that you in America are stupid and sick for allowing it. Right. So you have destroyed, you're willing to destroy your testimony to 1.4 billion people over there in India. And you're willing to destroy your testimony to 1.6 billion Muslims who, yeah, the Muslims are, have lots of problems. And I, I'm going to be doing a sermon, Islam in light of the Bible. I'm working on it. It's coming. Good. 
But let me tell you, it's a wicked religion, but let me tell you something. I love them and want them to be saved. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Just like I love the Catholics and want them to be saved. I love the Hindus and want them to be saved. I love the people of India. I love the people of the Arab. I don't want to nuke them all. I don't want to kill them all and let God sort them out. I want to actually see them get saved. Right. Right. And you know what? A lot of these Arabs and Persians are actually really nice people. And they need to be saved. But you know what? We in America are so busy falling all over ourselves to reach people that are impossible to reach, that hate God, that are implacable, that have zero interest in the gospel, that are the most disgusting, wicked people that the Bible describes. We're falling all over ourselves because we love them so much and we're destroying our testimony to the entire world. And we're just letting billions of people go into hell and don't even care. I mean, look, when was the last time you heard a bunch of preachers getting up and talking about what can we do to fix our testimony and what can we do to reach Muslims? What can we do to get Muslims saved? What can we do to get the Hindus saved? I mean, how often do you even hear people talk like that? It's just like, ah, these Arabs, you know, oh, Israel, oh, Jews, oh, oh, tiny nation of Israel with seven million people in it. Oh, well, India, where's that? Oh, the Arabs? Yeah, nuke them. Yeah, America, yeah. Iran is the axis of evil. No, you're the axis of evil, George Bush. Yeah. You're just as evil, George W. Bush, as any president of Iran has ever been. Yeah. It's both wicked. I'm not defending them. The leadership over there is wicked. The leadership over here, it's spiritual wickedness in high places. I mean, look, even in the book of Daniel, the, 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 there was a demon ruling over Persia, Iran, even back then. But you know what? I don't want to destroy my testimony to those people. I, I, want to, I love those people. I want them to be saved. So you know what? If, if it was really about loving people, you know what? We would, we would be loving people other than the people that we're told to love every day on TV. Isn't it just convenient that you just happen to coincidentally just want to talk how much you love the certain people that are just told every day that you need to love these people, love these people, love these people. And look, what's funny, look, here's the thing. Do I love the unsaved Jews and want them to be saved? Yeah. yeah. But what's funny is that every, it's just like, love Israel, love Israel, love the Jews, love the Jews. But why isn't it like, love the Arabs, yeah, right. love the Chinese, yeah. love the Persians, right. love Africa. Why isn't it that? Why are we just picking certain groups? And just, we're just going to love. And then we just pick the ones that, the one small, tiny group that God said, hate these people. <laughs> tiny group. The Sodomites, the sons of Belial, the reprobates. Yep. And then it's like, well, no, that's who we want to love. But we hate Pastor Anderson. Wake up, people. Wake up. Amen. This sermon is your spiritual alarm clock. You need to wake up tonight. Amen. And we need a sermon like this every once in a while. Amen. To wake us up. Amen. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord. And we thank you for the rock of our salvation, Lord, Amen. that doesn't just assure us eternal life and a home in heaven, but it gives us a rock to stand on where we never have to be moved, Lord. We don't have to stand on the shifting sands that Melissa is standing on tonight and Memories Pizza and all these other uh, tools of the media are standing on the shifting sands where they are talking completely differently than Christians talked 20 years ago and 40 years ago and 100 years ago, Lord. Help us to stand on the rock that never changes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.